We ecologists, we like to know where species are living and why. It is only once we understand what's behind the species distribution that we can begin to ask how said species will be affected by global change. Species distribution models, or SDMs, are popular tools to tackle such questions. They link species occurrences to data on background conditions, like the climate. Yet there is an issue there. What climate data should we use in such models? Ideally, one wants to use the conditions as experienced by the study organism, right? Traditionally, SDMs rely on free air temperature conditions with coarse resolutions of 1 km or more. Often, however, there is a mismatch between climate data and the climate experienced by organisms in the soil and close to the surface, like soil microorganisms, ground beetles or small plants. These temperature differences often add up to several degrees, for example, under a blanket of snow. Luckily, several studies have already made considerable progress in tackling this problem from different angles. In our recent review, we summarized the three most common approaches. Climate measurements with tiny temperature loggers, remotely sensed data from satellites or airplanes, for example, and microclimatic modeling. These three methods are all bringing us closer to the climate our study organisms actually experience. Now, we believe that instead of using all these approaches separately, they should be combined. Our framework proposes using a selection of appropriately placed sensors spanning a wide range of environmental conditions. This real-time local data from exactly the location where your study organisms live can then be combined with detailed measurements of the habitat 3D structure, for example derived from digital elevation models, to extrapolate measurements to the whole region. Then, long-term temperature data from nearby weather stations can be used to extend your in-situ measurements through time. With this unified approach, we can obtain microclimatic data with the optimal resolution and extent both in space and time to accurately model current and future species distributions. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating, of course. The framework is there, but now we are stepping up the game. We want to apply our concept on a global scale. Therefore, we launched SoilTemp, a global database of soil temperature data. More information on this initiative can be found on soiltemp.weebly.com.